Hi everybody. I got that power. I got that power. I love the power. I love the power. La 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 la. Hello again, Nashville Software School students. This is Steve Brownlee, your lead instructor. And this short video is just going to talk about functions, what their purpose is, what their power is, why we use them. So I'm starting off here with just a very simple uh, HTML document. You see, you just got a body tag with a div, um, just some text inside of it. And beneath that, I have a script tag that is including or importing a JavaScript file called functions.js. That is what we're going to use to dynamically add things to a document. That's one of the things that JavaScript can do for you. But we're going to talk about how to use a function to do that. So let's go over to functions.js right now. It's got nothing in it. Okay. So let's think of something to do. So I'm going to use JavaScript to put text inside my document dynamically. Right now it's got some static content that will always show up. So I'll go over here and open up my browser. There it is. Regular old HTML content. Oh, I forgot the T there. There we go. So I'm going to add another div here real quick. And I'm going to give it an ID of, oh, let's say dynamic content. There we go. Now I'm going to put any content in here. And I'm going to use my JavaScript to insert some text inside of that. And let's just start out with something simple. I'm going to put the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So it'll look like this when I'm done. But instead of having it hard-coded in here, I'm going to use my JavaScript to do that. So let's go over to functions.js. And let's start off with just a variable that will hold that number. And I'm going to call it counter. Okay? I'm going to start it off at 0. That's its default value. Now I'm going to take counter and I'm going to place its value in the document after a series of steps. Well, if you haven't seen this yet, I'll show you how to identify an element here in the document. Your instructors may have shown you this already, but if, um, if they haven't, this will be new to you. This is how you do it. So in JavaScript, I'm going to create a new element to store an actual DOM element. Okay, so here's a variable. I'm going to call it output element. Okay. Now it's going to store a reference to this div, okay? And I can use document, and that, so that's a reference in JavaScript to the actual HTML document where it got included into, okay? Get element by ID. There it is. I'm going to paste that ID in there. Okay, so now counter is a variable whose value is zero. Output element is a variable whose value is an actual DOM tree element, whose ID is dynamic content. So let's actually start putting some stuff in our document. So I'll reload the page. You'll see nothing's really changed. So I'm going to increment my counter variable by one, because remember, I want one, two, three, four, five. So plus equals one. We're going to increment counter's value by one. So it will be one here. And then I'm going to take that value and I'm going to put it into the document. And you can use inner HTML. What are we going to set that equal to? Well, let's just send it to counter. So we have a DOM reference here. We're going to set its HTML. So what that means is, if I go put a line break here, so between these two div tags, that's the inner HTML. So if we go back up to this div tag, Okay, this content that I put in here, that's its inner HTML. Okay, so I'm setting it to one for that one beneath it. So I'm going to go load my browser. Okay, there's the one I got put in beneath it. Now I want one, two, three, four, five. So when you first write, start writing JavaScript, um, you can just do it procedurally, just a series of steps, one right after the other. So I'm going to take these lines, and so it starts off at one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So it's incremented each time, and then I'm updating the inner HTML. So what do you think I'm going to see here? One, two, three, four, five? Well, unfortunately not. We're just going to see five because of the way inner HTML works. Every time you set it equal to something, what you're basically telling JavaScript to do is wipe out everything that is currently in the inner HTML of that element and place this there instead. 
So as JavaScript goes through these series of instructions, the inner HTML is going to be one, then it's going to be just two, just three, just four, and just five, because it's wiping it out every time. So a way to append to the inner HTML is to plus equal it. So basically, take whatever is there and add this after it. So I'm going to change all of those to plus equals. So now we should see one, two, three, four, five here. Refresh. There we go. One, two, three, four, five. Now, unfortunately, what we have here is duplicated code. And as you're going to learn over the next six months, duplicated code is bad because it could lead to human error because humans are modifying this code. So if the decision is made that we don't want to increment the counter by just one, we want to count it or increment it by two every time, a developer has to come back in here and for every single one of these, instead of incrementing by one, they're going to increment by two. Now humans being as error prone as they are, I could just get distracted and forget to change this. That would be bad because that introduces a bug into the system. You know, the program isn't operating the way we want it to. So when we refresh this, we want it to be 246810, but what we see is 24689 because I forgot it. But since we want the same thing to happen, okay, each one of these steps, that's what a function is for. So what we see now here is a JavaScript program. But what a function is, is basically a subprogram, a, a series of logical steps that you want to take in your program that you can call anywhere. So let's define a function whose purpose is to increment the counter variable and output it. So that's done with the function keyword, and we'll just call it increment counter and output. Nice descriptive name for our function. That's what its purpose is. Then we use parentheses and then curly braces. So now I'm going to take these two lines, because this is what I want to happen every time this function is executed. Okay. So now, let's get rid of all this. All right, so now we have a subprogram that has been defined. It hasn't been executed yet. It's simply been defined. If I go back here and refresh this, okay, that didn't happen. The instructions are there. It incremented the counter and set the inner HTML, but it hasn't been executed yet, this subprogram. And to execute a function, all we do is put the name of the function in and put parentheses after it, and that is what is called invoking or executing a function. So at this point, JavaScript executes this line, this line, sees this as kind of one line of code. It defines something, and then we execute the definition of that function. So now if I come back here, we will see just the number two in there. So, but we want to see 246810, and we want the same series of instructions. So now we can just call the function five times. There we go, 246810. We've now invoked or executed a subprogram five times in a row, and the actual logic that we want to happen every time is now what's called encapsulated. This is a term you're going to learn throughout the course. It's one of the pillars of object-oriented programming. It's called encapsulation. It means to take uh, complex logic. This isn't very complex, but you take a series of steps and you encapsulate it, meaning you put it inside something else that can be used, okay? So I've encapsulated the series of steps to increment a counter and output it to the page into a function, and then anywhere in my code, I can call that function and run those series of steps. So at the very basics, that's what a function is. It's a subprogram that you can call anywhere in your code that you need a series of complex steps to be performed, and you want to ensure that the same series of steps and you don't have duplicated code all throughout your entire application. So hopefully that helps you understand what the power and the purpose of a function is, and we'll see you in class.